Christmas would never be the same without a beautiful, delicious honey glazed ham. Across that long Christmas period, this can get you out of jail quite easily. Ham salads, ham sandwiches, ham egg and chips. This is a gammon. What we could do now is cook it so it becomes a ham. Into a pan. First things first, the water. Cover it completely so the whole gammon cooks evenly. The important part now is adding flavour in there. Carrots in. The leeks. The more veg in there now, the more fragrant the broth becomes. Once the ham is cooked, that stock is extraordinary. The base to a fantastic soup. Onion, not finely chopped, and in. Homemade ham stock is packed with flavour, so it's great for making soups, sauces, stews and risottos. Plus, it can be frozen, so it's there when you need it. Pan down. Peppercorns, lightly crushed. Then, to give it a Christmas flavour, I'm adding crushed coriander seeds, two cinnamon sticks, and four aromatic bay leaves. Up to the boil, and then turn it down, let it simmer, and then skim it. Cooking a ham isn't hard, but it does take time. This two kilo joint takes two and a half hours to simmer, before it's glazed and baked. However, it is worth it, because it tastes absolutely delicious. So, the glaze, very, very simple. Demerara sugar, Madeira. That sweetens the glaze, basically a fortified wine. A couple of tablespoons, in, and then share vinegar. Again, a couple of tablespoons, honey in. Nice. Bring that up to the boil. The longer you leave it on the stove, the darker it becomes. You want your ham really nice and dark, then cook out the glaze for three or four minutes. That, I'm happy with. Lovely. Right, the gammon's cooked now. Onto the plate. Carefully snip the string. Nice and gently peel back. Get rid of the skin, then crisscross it. Don't push too deep. Let the knife do the work. Stud it with some clothes. Look at it. Almost looks like an albino pineapple. The glaze, and just carefully cover. Start in the middle and let it work round. Oh, God. Gently, 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 gently. It's not even roasted yet, and it looks amazing. Beautiful. Look at that. Half the glaze over now. Into the oven. 15 minutes. It's starting to colour. Get the rest of the glaze and pour that over. Look at it, wow. The more effort, passion and love you show the ham now, the results are tenfold. Look at it, every five minutes, out of the oven and glaze again. And back into the oven now, at 190 degrees, and we're gonna baste and roast for 35 minutes. Delicious. Next, I'm gonna make a pear and saffron chutney. This is a fruity relish that works brilliantly with a sweet, aromatic ham. First things first, slice the onion. Fry the chopped onion in olive oil without coloring it. The important part about this stage is the fact that we're gonna layer the chutney with textures, from onion to apple to pear, and a nice little block of ginger, grating the ginger so the ginger sort of disappears with the onions. Then add the spices. A good grating of nutmeg, followed by a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of cayenne pepper to give it a kick. Delicious. I recently spent a lot of time in India, where chutneys originated, and discovered that whereas British-style chutneys tend to be cooked and are usually quite sweet, Indian ones are normally fresh, spicier, and quite sour. Next, demerara sugar. Once that sugar's dissolved, the white wine vinegar, all in. 
That's going to give it this really nice sort of sweet and sour flavour. From there, our fruit. These are Williams pears. Pear is the star of the chutney, so keep it quite rustic. Next, add chopped cooking apples. Their tartness gives a lovely contrast to the sweetness of the pears. To give it great texture, a handful of sultanas. A pinch of saffron. This gives it a really nice depth, a rich golden colour. Saffron is the world's most expensive spice. It's made from the dried stigmas of the saffron crocus flower. And as a general rule of thumb, the deeper the colour of the threads, the better the quality. And to make it lighter, the zest and juice of two oranges. The orange and the saffron go brilliantly well together. Just squeeze that in there. This chutney is brilliant with ham, fantastic in salads, but equally as delicious with fish. Whether it's a roasted cod, a grilled fillet of mackerel, it goes brilliantly well. Bring that up to the boil. Cook that out for 15 minutes. Now, tomatoes going at the end. And that brings a certain amount of freshness to the chutney. Really helps to give it that nice texture. Mix that in. And literally cook it out for 30 seconds. What's great about this chutney is that as it matures, its flavour gets better and better, and it will keep for up to six months. Fill up the jar, and that is going to deliver amazing flavour across Christmas. And look, my goodness me, that is fit for a king. <laughs>